तव कथा तप्त जीवन कविभिरीडित कलमशापह श्रवणमंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंती भूरीदा जना भुवि गृणंती भूरीदा जना Shri Ram Krishna is speaking to Govinda. The soul becomes restless for God when one is true with the enjoyment of the worldly things. Then a person has just only one thought: how to realize God. He listens to whatever anyone says to him about God. the soul becomes restless for god when one is through with the enjoyment of the worldly things bhogerante jogobe when all the he is saturated with the enjoyments he is feeling enough of this so that thirst for god comes when the thirst for the world ends one way is to go through the process of awakening viveka that is power of discrimination the power of discrimination viveka is between nitya nitya vastu nitya nitya vastu viveka what is nitya what is anitya so many enjoyments so many things are there but all are transitory what to hold on to and if it is only transitory like i am taking a cup of coffee after some time one more cup of coffee i go on enjoying doesn't matter it is not a temporary phase alone but a cause of constant suffering and bondage dukha yonaya evaste those are not only anitya transitory all the enjoyments of this world even if it is momentary it doesn't matter but each enjoyment is going to leave behind lot of suffering and bondage this causes man to get exhausted each time he catches something as an object of enjoyment it is coming coming with a veil of enjoyment and giving peace and joy but inside is the content is suffering and bondage it is coming as if it is going to fulfill all the desires of life whether it is secular education or marriage or getting a job or earnings whatever we search for uh, but it is unending and apart from dukha dukha along with bondage and suffering transitory and is the cause of karma karmic bondage hmm. sukha dukha it it is going to fall in a sukha dukha it doesn't give and go away it goes along with a vasana which is going to continue eternally this life i acquired something 
I know it's going to give me pain. With the enjoyment, I've got the pain. So much of insult, so much of neglect, so much of bodily suffering, old age, diseases, all these we have experienced. But the drive to enjoy again and possess again continues. Vasanas continue. Apart from karma phala. So, this, I am entering into a vicious circle from where I cannot come. Uh, do action to enjoy. Enjoyment is not their sufferings, this. in spite of that, that momentum we gain by running after the world is going to continue. So, with all that, the man, lives of lives running, running, he gets exhausted. Where am I running? Where is the real joy? Where is the peace? Where is freedom? How long to remain in bondage and suffering? How long these external things go on enticing me and my run shall continue? So this discrimination, it is nitya nitya vastu viveka and the consequences, parinama. What is going to be the parinama of my actions? So these two, this is viveka. Once the viveka awakens, immediately he will see that he is able to discard what is going to give him pain, bondage, and then go on extending his suffering endlessly. He wants to dissociate. He wants now permanent joy, permanent bliss, unending bliss. Then comes the reality. So we, with the end of this enjoyment, enough of it, enough of it, then the real opens, opens the door for perfection. Sri Ramakrishna is saying the soul becomes restless for God. When one is through with the enjoyments of worldly things, then a person has only one thought. One thought persists in his mind. Where shall I find God? Where shall I realize God? I have heard about God. There is a thing called God, which is beyond, which is ocean, especially when we come to the Hinduism. It is not redemption of the soul and going of the soul to heaven, but it is released from the samsara. Hmm. The concept of God changes entirely. God is a ocean of Satchidananda, existence, consciousness, bliss absolute, or existence, knowledge, bliss absolute. Sat Chit Ananda, his Ananda Swarupa. I am going to recognize, I am going to realize my own identity, real identity, that I am divine. Each soul is potentially divine. The goal is to manifest this inner divinity. So, this goal uh, to know my own divinity, what is the Authority or proof, no need of any authority or proof. We are experiencing every day, separating from body. This whole, we enter into sleep. From sleep, I enter into deep sleep. Every dreams end. And then, what am I? Who am I? Why did I lose the body awareness? Why did I dissociate from my body? Who am I? In dream world, I identified with dream, body. Who am I in this body? So, this unchanging, eternal reality within, I want to know. So, I want to realize God. I have heard God, a thing called is there, and it is beyond in which the universes appear and disappear. I have heard 
there is a god which is impersonal and a god personal personal to manage my life things in the world cultivate devotion and finally the absolute existence or the impersonal absolute or the impersonal god is pure existence in which all other things appear and disappear so god in hinduism is not a person or i is something that is staying somewhere governing the universe or life it is a thing in which the universe and jivas appear and disappear time and again it is a thing which is unchanging eternal infinite existence the absolute existence absolute means there is nothing else other than that it is absolute it is unlimited if any limitation is there any identity or anything is there it is going to limit unlimited so this unlimited eternal ocean of bliss and that which is not going to end time and space bound universes appear and disappear it is beyond time and space that we call god in personal god is existence pure existence when pure existence means it is conscious and it is not only conscious and bliss it is existence it is bliss absolute sat chit ananda so we analyze and try to realize that which is unchanging at other and unchanging and bliss absolute sat chit ananda so there is personal god also the universe is supported is per- pervaded by the same sachidananda the pervading aspect of that to the for the universe we call the ishvara or the lord of the universe this is personal god which is pervading every object in this universe it is pervading every soul as the antaryamin every object of this world as the sutratman the pervading so this we have personal god to whom we pray to keep our life safe free from dangers free from suffering and pray him to enlighten me with along the right path with right understanding so this awareness of god we use in the our day to life in this world to keep me safe dharma artha kama moksha the four purusharthas having attained a human body what are we to attain what are we to achieve in this world what for we have come it is for the fulfillment working out our karma and while working out our karma life needs four entities to be fulfilled one i must be right here yes, otherwise i'll be sinking down into greater suffering and greater bondage greater darkness of life so dharma is necessary to live according to the laws of nature dharma artha i need means of existence means of enjoyment and according to my efforts i get my enjoyments in the means of enjoying the things objects i can possess the earth yeah, actually earth means wealth or mean means actually means of my needs which with, with which i can fulfill all the needs and objects that i need or fulfill the desires so dharma arth kama did the in all types of desires 
Uh, I may desire for education, I may desire for knowing music, I am learning music, I may desire any kind of desire with which I am going to have some fulfillment in life. It can be objects of enjoyment also. It may be objects of necessity like a vehicle sometimes. Sometimes vehicle can be a comfort. Sometimes vehicle can be a luxury also. Depending upon the occasion and my status. So these, all these things, objects. I may need a family, the desire for a family. I may desire for anything. All these needs and necessities of life the, that I am going to fulfill is called the Kama. Dharma, Artha, Kama. Living according to the laws of nature, Dharma, so that you will not sink. Artha has your efforts to attain whatever you desire for. And Kama, the desires, needs and necessities of life is included in Kama. And then, then the last Moksha, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha. In and through all this, these three Dharma, Artha, Kama is just to keep the body alive in a proper way without any commotions inside, without any conflicts, without any contradictions to live in this world. Dharma, Artha, Kama are used. And this living is exclusively for transcending the nature and entering into eternal freedom. And this we call the moksha. Moksha is what I am going to attain. So, dharma, artha, kama, moksha according to law of nature, earth, dharma, artha, according to earnings, you enjoy and in and through all this, transcend the nature and go beyond. So, this is what is meant by the Mm, going through all this. So he get, now he is desiring for moksha. The other three, Dharma, Artha, Kama, are meant for moksha. So then a person has only one thought, how to realize God. He listens to whatever anyone says to him about God, anything. God is like this, God is like that. Now, how many saints have um, presented God in different ways, different forms, different aspects of God? Similarly, the enlightened souls, Buddha has a message, enlightenment, how to reach the nirvana. The Vedantins have each denomination of Hinduism Shaiva, Shakta, Vaishnava, all these people. Uh, then there are various religions like Jains, Jainism, Buddhism, all these isms are there. So all these the, are the paths to realize that. Mm. Then the one thought remains how to realize God. He listens to whatever anyone says. Now he goes on. If this person explains in God, regarding God in one way, the other, God is only this form. Or God is this form. God has Rama's form. Ramites describe God as Rama. Krishna followers describe He is the ultimate reality. He is God. Hmm. And None else can be God, many people feel and say about it. And this goes on continuing in different ways. Finally, we see that some, which is, we go on hearing with various aspects. Some Shiva, they will be explaining what is Shiva, God is Shiva, God is this, God is Advaita, God is Dvaita. All this we hear to one we awake. 
that which is my internal nature. What am I born of? What is my inter innermost nature? Is it towards the uh, doing welfare to the world or to re get the release and go away? The Shaiva, Shakta, Vishnu, all these are decided upon your inner content. What is your software within? How are you going to transcend the nature? To what hold on to what principle you are going to transcend? Because each one now we have so many people, some are have engineering orientation. They are predominantly intellectual. The others are very good in business. They take up commerce, some like arts, some like professions like medical, law. Uh, they, if the been apart from opportunity, if it is their option, then why did they like the particular aspect of studies? Is because his nature responds to it. His nature corresponds to it. So he chooses that, like that. Each soul chooses a particular path. And another thing is in which he is born and brought up. He is exposed to it, he is not exposed to the other. And as we grow elder, then we see these become permanent marks and permanent grooves through which mind starts working. So, we, it is the, instead of wasting time and all that, it is easier for us always to hold on and cling to certain things which is easier for us always to move about. Yem to himself, look here, hmm. to him, to himself, alas, the soul becomes restless for God only when one is through with the enjoyments of worldly things. He must have finished all his desires for enjoyment. Hmm. Alas, the soul becomes restless for God. The restlessness for God is there. It is accepted and he wants it. Hmm. He becomes restless for God only when he is through with the enjoyments of worldly things. Means, oh, when that day will come in my life that I feel, a, uh, I feel no more attraction for this world or its enjoyment. When that day will come when I feel restless for God. August 18, 1883. Sri Ramakrishna was at Balram Bose house in Calcutta. He was explaining the mystery of divine incarnation to the devotees. What a beautiful thing. A God who has come in human form explaining the concept of incarnation. Master, in order to bring people spiritual knowledge and incarnation of God lives in the world in the company of devotees, cherishing an attitude of love for God. Why does God come? Because the soul, every soul needs a helping hand to make it evolve. In order to bring people spiritual knowledge, an incarnation of God lives in the world in the company of, company of devotees, cherish, cherishing an attitude of love for God. Now you see, in order to bring the people spiritual knowledge, why spiritual knowledge? Uh, why not secular knowledge or science, technology? Now modern, latest, we have computer, IT and all that. What this spiritual knowledge for what? The all other knowledges 
of the secular type are going to bind me. It is necessary for my bodily living and nothing more it gives me. It doesn't give me, it's not going to give me eternal life. I have to pass through death and birth. How the born child is going to become a old age, passing through various stages. We win between that suffering. And you see how much of man suffers, but he doesn't want to leave everything for God and long for God. The longing doesn't come. Little by little, that has, spirituality has to be fed. And a practical demonstration uh, becomes essential. I have attained, look here, you too can attain. And the incarnations come, there are so many paths explained in so many ways by so many people. And as it extends through time, some parts become not applicable for the changing times. Some acquire some dirt here and there which are inevitable. And each person while struggling to realize God in and through that path, he leaves some of his old tendencies into it and that becomes the, the uh, something which is unwanted and these things are to be eliminated from flowing down. Now, uh, God gives whatever you ask for, we say. Suppose a person is worldly, he goes on praying for his, weeping to God for his worldly enjoyments, worldly possessions. And when losses come, fear come, anxiety come, he tries to enjoy, go to God for that. And he leaves a mark on his future generation, his children and grandchildren, that asking for secular things to God is a genuine thing as if it is going to give him eternal life and eternal joy and peace. This becomes a dirt in the, it is getting accumulated dirt, unwanted things. And this has to be eliminated, pure love of God, pure spirituality. And the spirituality is loving God. Spirituality is knowing God. Spirituality is realizing God. Spirituality is expansion of heart, expansion of mind. Spirituality is expansion of consciousness. So all this, this where is that? When we come to things that I'm asking for small temporary things which is passing away. So these things God eliminates. Incarnations come with multiple purposes, are accomplished and got from the, and given to the people a perfect path to reach according to the changing times. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Rama Krishna Arpanamastur